right, and welcome back to Today We Review. And today we're going to be reviewing the PlayStation Portable or also known as a PSP. This specific model that we're going to be reviewing is going to be the model 3000. Uh, please note there are additional models including the street model as well plus a PSP Go which today we will be discussing further as well but today we're going to be looking specifically at the PlayStation Portable. So this one in particular is has an interesting story. It's the first handheld console that I did obtain. Uh, it's, it was purchased originally 2012, 2013-ish around that time and uh, it didn't really come with a bundle at the, that time so it was just the PlayStation itself uh, no movies or anything I missed out on the special editions and everything else but this is a PSP that I've had for almost 10 years so today we're gonna be reviewing it we're gonna be looking at it we're gonna be examining it going into depth and then I'll provide my uh, opinion regarding the PlayStation Portable so let's go ahead and take a look at it so this particular model um, is very similar to the other models except for since it's the last year last version we did see some notable differences and current and good updates as well. Uh, same features as the previous versions, which included your uh, buttons on this side, of course, the directional and the, the analog stick with the various kinds of uh, display options as well towards the bottom. The screen on this version is actually better than the previous ones. Um, however, it is a lot lighter compared to the older models as well. So this is the way it looks towards the back as well. And on this side, uh, let me go ahead and open it. We do have the battery and it's a 3.6 uh, 1200 and on this side we have, oh, let me go ahead and put it. This side it contains the memory stick. Now your device requires a memory stick pro dual. However, what I ended up doing was actually configuring it and today we are using 128 gigabytes inside of here which was crazy back then i mean when the playstation portable first came out i remember that uh one of our classmates during lunch he came up to us and told us he got one and he told us he had a one gigabyte memory stick into it and we were just blown away because we we're like what are you gonna fill it up with like it's impossible to fill it up with so much stuff like what in the world can you fill it up with and i mean now a gigabyte is literally nothing it's, I mean, we, we have games that are, you know, 68 gigabytes uh, for the PlayStation uh, 5, 4, I'm sorry, and additional models for the Xbox. So it's crazy. But this right here is going to be, uh, the device that we're reviewing today is a emulated version as well. So it has been uh, modded to play additional games and we'll look through that as well. Um, one of the things that I was going to mention about this model was that in the difference between this model and the other models is that it no longer contains the the hatch to open the PlayStation back door. Instead, you by yourself open the, the back door and, and that's what it looks. It's very glossy. I've been keeping up with it, uh, with its maintenance and its uh, features, as you could tell. That was one of the downsides that you could see clearly the fingerprints. There we go. And that's the internal section. So one of the reasons that this model is a lot lighter is mainly because it doesn't contain the, the spring-loaded hatch in the back. Instead, you just open this one and close it. So this is a quick overview. This was the overview, the general overview of the PlayStation Portable. Uh, one additional thing is that the PlayStation wasn't your common console, handheld console, because it actually did use a different form to play games. So traditionally you did have cartridges and additional things, but the PlayStation contained what well, station did contain what was called the UMD and different from the other versions is that it didn't have a cartridge instead it was a disc and here we go this is and I mean it would work the same way as a 
it would work the same way as reading a, a DVD or a CD player with a laser disc as well. Uh, I always thought this was fascinating because everybody else had cartridges, um, you know, and we never really seen a device that had contained a CD, which was pretty awesome because uh, it was kind of like mimicking the PlayStation. Uh, PS PlayStation 2 at that time and then PlayStation 3 as well that it required a disc you know with the other consoles um, Game Boys all had cartridges so it was interesting to see that you know a, a company went with a disc however the downside is that compared to the other ones if it scratches it's kind of like uh, out of luck and if you were to drop it or anything that's kind of where it cracks and goes bad um, that is a downside but additionally from that it's a pretty good uh, system uh, this game particularly requires metal slug xx double double xx uh, one of those games as well that's been pretty fun to play with if you ever have a chance i'd highly recommend to purchase one of these um, they're hard to find now especially the games the games are a lot harder to uh, find since uh, playstation ended up going into the psp goal which was all download downloadable content So let's go ahead and turn this PlayStation or this PSP on. And as soon as we start, we're introduced to the welcome screen. Now, like I mentioned, this is a modded PlayStation Portable, so it's very different from its original layout. You do also have the feature to be able to go into it. Now, for a 2020 review, I will say that the PlayStation hasn't, it has held its own and yet it hasn't and I will explain here we are at the main menu and of course we do see the normal setups for settings a setting system update USB connection uh, video settings photo settings system settings steam settings date and time power connected display settings so the PlayStation one of its additional features from being able to play games navigate the internet listen to music watch videos was also allowing you to be able to project those images or the video onto your TV if you had the uh, AV component cable. So that's one of the, I mean, the PlayStation itself is, the PlayStation Portable itself is one of a very fascinating devices because it was advanced for its time. The single fact that it allowed you to navigate the internet was mind-blowing. Of course, you could do that with a DS later on as well, but the PlayStation Portable was the first one to provide you with a handheld device uh, with the capabilities for internet. So, of course, here we go. And the other ones, of course, cameras, and if we have any additional ones. So we have free space of 85 gigabytes, additional music. We don't really have any of those. And the videos. Uh, videos were a bit interesting. For some reason, I have had horrible luck in terms of uh, playing playback videos playing back videos on the PlayStation Portable for some reason I cannot get the format correctly I even purchased the the DVD the CD setup software the original one so to work with it and even then I couldn't so here's a quick uh, review Resolution on this PlayStation is actually pretty decent. Uh, if you were to go outside, it is a little bit harder because of the screen that it glares. But other than that, I mean, it has a pretty good color. You're able to switch between the the brightness of it, and that's an interesting feature. It does come with onboard speakers, which are on the top sections as well, and they do have a pretty good. A pretty good range for sound of course they did provide with additional features and accessories which contained um, external speakers and additionally powered uh, headphones that had the capability of navigating the songs or music or any of the additional things as well and of course we have the games and I'll go in through the games right now and of course we have internet browser downside is I can't really connect with it anymore and as well the PlayStation Network for the PlayStation PSP is no longer really supported so it's a downside so when I was mentioning that if it holds its own yes it does in terms of usage however you could do everything that the PlayStation is doing on your phone 
So with emulators, you could play PlayStation Portable games and you could play additional games as well. However, till this day, I still prefer holding a gaming device in my hands and using it for gaming. It feels much better. I don't like having a touch on screen and it takes away from the screen size as well so i'd rather stick with that uh it's simpler it's more convenient however the fact that it can't go on the internet anymore so that is a downside everything else still works of course with photos things like that and videos movies all that still works so let's go ahead and go into the memory stick and let's check it out so here we do have a couple of uh, emulators as well that i ended up placing into it uh we do have your these versions, uh, let me go here. I will be able to provide all the links to every item that I am mentioning about right now. And of course, to the videos that provided tutorials for uh, this device in terms of emulations and not the ROMs. ROMs you'll be able to, ha you have to get them yourself. But the emulators, I will provide instructions on how to upload them. And this was provided by multiple YouTube videos. So we'll go ahead and click in. And straight ahead, we do have a couple of, of uh, Japanese games for the PlayStation. And of course, oh, oh, oh that's not mine. I don't know who, who was that. Um, and of course we have Capcom Classics, uh, we have a wide variety of different games here that are for the PlayStation. Um, some of these games you are able to and that's what I ended up also doing. There are, they are mine and I was able to transfer them onto the PlayStation so they weren't um, borrowed, you could say. These are actual my games. Um, and let's go ahead and Go really quick. One of the other things I was mentioning is that you are able to play other games as well. So we are able to play Game Boy games and of course uh, um, Super Nintendo. And of course this is the Sega and we have the Game Boy SP games as well. So let's go ahead and look into how do we load one game up using the previous game that we had from our library. So go ahead and open your package to withdraw your game. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna open the hatch in the back and you're simply gonna slide the game and the game has to be facing outward. So whenever you're putting it, you have to put the disc inside and all you do is you close it, let it. And it'll read it by itself. I'm not sure if you're able to hear that. And there we go. It automatically came up and we'll go ahead and click X. So that is kind of a one downside is that if you are playing the PlayStation compared to the other games, you weren't really able to move around as much because it has a disc. And because of the disc, if same thing with the DVD or CD player back then, uh, if you move it, it can't skip or stutter or anything like that. However, PlayStation did a really great job with containing the, the UMD inside and not having it move. However, the additional thing that is a downside is because of it's a disc and it reads it, you do hear the motor instead of just the cartridge itself that has no additional moving features. That in itself is a good and a bad side as well because if anything occurs inside or dust or anything like that, the mechanical features in the back can go bad. So here we go. And one of the things that I had originally mentioned as well is that it does hold a good job with uh, games, videos, and the resolution as well is pretty good. Screen size is maybe about two inches high by three and a half inches long. Uh, the controls on top part were always interesting that they were clear. Uh, we do have left and right. It doesn't contain the other features as well like the PlayStation Control where it has R1, R2, L1, L2, but it does have its pro main features as well, analog stick. Now the PlayStation Portable also allowed you to be able to uh, play online. So in this particular case, this game is, and it shows it here, PlayStation Network compatible. So you were able to log in and go into different things. And I mentioned, unfortunately, you aren't able to view this one on 
online. So here we go, Chorus Network. So to our two player co-op mode, team up, innovate the uh, impregnable oh <laughs> enemy base uh however because it's no longer uh connected and the software and everything of course has already been um or it has hasn't but it's no longer really supported it's a lot harder to play games online um feature wise additionally it's good it's it's not large enough and let me show you it's not large enough that it's uncomfortable in your hands but it is kind of small at the same time, if you are a larger person in terms of height, um, the PlayStation Portable, it has that same scenario with phones that because of its size, it could be small. I mean, for me, it's pretty good. I'm not that tall, my hands aren't big, so um, I'm able to navigate and use all the features as well. But for, for example, one of my cousins, he's like six feet something, his hands are a lot bigger. So the PlayStation itself is a lot smaller for him in his hands. Um, that is one oh, that's one downside if you are a much taller person that this system could be a lot could be small or inconvenient for you because everything's so so close so the analog for example it's right here if you're using it this form it could get tiring um, but that's mainly it that's the features that we are viewing here today I hope you all enjoyed this video this uh, playstation i still would say if any of you can have the opportunity to buy one please do even to this day i still think it's fun i mean i still use this one of course i do have my uh, silicone uh, cover so in case i ever drop it or anything i, I you know just to make sure but um to this day, I still use it with uh, UMDs or the emulators and ROMs. It's a very fun game. I've never encountered any issues. I mean, the one issue that I did have was the internet not working properly anymore. And one of the things that I really enjoyed was because I ended up going to a business trip and I, that's when I first bought the PlayStation. So I took it on the plane and on the plane, on the terminal and everything, I was using the internet to like go on Facebook, um, watch YouTube videos and it was amazing you know having it here and this was prior before Android phones were very marketable as well but like I mentioned now you could you have all these additional features inside the phone so does it become obsolete in 2000 in 2020 to a certain point however it still holds its own in terms of capabilities and performance the PlayStation Portable version 3000 I would still recommend to this very day if you have a chance go ahead and buy one they're about 60 to 80 dollars depending on what additional features it have but they're worth it I really recommend having one so thank you very much for watching lots of love and kisses hope you all have a great day and I'll see you guys next time oh, it's a tight one in here Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron. I like that. White Darth Vader PSP. Nice unit. <laughs> Collectible. That's great. Customize your weapons better you can. Dude, get your own. Star Wars Battlefront Entertainment Pack.